specijalnoj epizodi sutra sam ja ne obilazimo fakultete, već našu zemlju. Nedavno su Srbiju posetili studenti i profesori iz Saoceka za arheologiju Univerziteta u Cambridgeu i oni su došli da se uvere kakav muzej se krije pod našim nogama. Sa njima ćemo proći samo jedan deo naše zemlje koji svedoči o vremenu koje je trajalo gotovo devet milenijuma. Kakav je utisak Srbije ostavila na arheologi iz Engleske koji rade i putuju svuda po svetu? The main excavation we're doing at this time is the, the one at Must Farm, this marvelously preserved Bronze Age site, which has hit the new world news quite a bit. Over the years, we're, we're developing projects now in Nigeria, but also uh, been asked if we'll start working in the Antarctic. Um, it's a very nice side of the, the work we have being part of the university that we I also then have run research projects on the Cape Verde Islands at this point, but I've worked in Nepal and Yemen and Inner Mongolia. So it, uh, it's a very nice job I have, and you get to visit very nice places like this. I'm an environmental archaeologist, so I mostly study human environmental interactions in the past. My research is looking at how um, pastoralists, so people who uh, raise herd animals primarily, impact um, the vegetation and grassland and trees in northern Mongolia. So I actually work quite a far way away. I didn't know anything before coming here, so it's a, it's a great learning opportunity for me. Um, so I, yeah, so um, I know a little bit about medieval archaeology, so monasteries and uh, funerary sites. So it's going to be really interesting to see how what I see here compares with what I know about in Western Europe. I did a little bit of work in Bosnia in, uh, in uh, last September. Um, so I've, I've had a small introduction to the Balkan area, but uh, this is my first time in Serbia. I'm very excited to be here. I haven't been, I've been to Montenegro, I've been to Romania, I've never been to Serbia. I know this area of the world to be one of the great crossroads of the world and its cultures. So for me, it's, you know, it's a tremendously complicated history and past you have. Um, so basically I want to learn about it. That's why I've taken the opportunity to come on the trip. It's tremendously important. Coming to a place like this for Vinca, I mean, this, you have so many of the great type sites of European prehistory. So I would have studied the Vinca culture in 1978 when I was a young student of archaeology. So for me to finally come and see the site is tremendously important. And you have, you know, between Vinca and Lepensky Vir, you know, for the European Neolithic, it just doesn't get any better. Nedaleko od Beograda, u selu Vinča, u doba Neolita, mlađe kamenog doba, nastala je Vinčanska kultura. Ova važna kultura iz perioda kada je evropski neolit bio na vrhuncu, koja je dobila naziv po ovom nalazištu, obuhvatala je prostor od Karpata do Kosova i Metohije. Slojevi koje su naši arheolozi otkrili danas služe kao reper za period koji je trajao više od jednog milenijuma. Jedinstvene figurine, originalne građevinske tvorevine i tajanstven način života učinili su da Vinča postane poznato ime u svetu i u arheologiji, kao i u kulturi. Kakvu tajnu Vinča krije? Vinča je izgledala. To biti stavljeno na toču 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 being an environmental archaeologist, so it's quite a treat. Vinča u poslednje vreme, odnosno vinčka kultura dolazi u, zapravo u, u centar interesovanja svetskih arheologa još iz jednog razloga, što se zapravo ispostavlja da se u okviru vinčanske kulture Po prvi put pojavljuje metalurgija. Mi ovdje imamo zapravo početak te metalurgije na tlu Evrope. Naime, vinčarska kultura se datuje u vreme od 5,5 do 4,5 hiljada godina pre nove ere, a mi već u to vreme ovdje imamo kuće kojima bi mogli da pozavide čak i danas. 
To su kuće od 20 do 80 metara kvadratnih sa termoizolacijom na zidovima, sa patosima koji su polirani, sa pećima u kućama. Vinča je i između ostalog jedinstvena i još po nečemu, to što mi ovde imamo 10,5 metara arheoloških naslaga i u tih 10,5 metara bukvalno imamo upakovano 7,5 hiljada godina života bez prekida. I na jednom mestu vi praktično možete sagledati tu kompletnu istoriju evropske kulture i civilizacije. In Serbia I came to look at the figurines, but I have to admit this is the first site when we have very, very well uh, exposed figurines. There are certain figurines which are uh, completely unexpected. I have never seen the figurines which you have a female feeding the baby from Neolithic. That I could only maybe once seen in Japan. I haven't seen it anywhere in, in, in Europe. And that would be very interesting how then we are thinking about not the role of the woman, but certain period of a human development and how those figurines are uh, constructed. Because, for example, I mean, as, as I said, I just saw them. So what struck me that the woman is very thin or, you know, not as a mother, which would be feeding the baby after the birth. And it's still, you know, post birth uh, have the fat tissue. So that archaeologists would need to discover and, and look at this. Arheološko nalazište takođe iz doba mlađeg kamenog doba koje otkriva period starijeg neolita, a onda i vreme vinčanske kulture u srednjem pomoravlju jeste Drenovac, nadomak Paraćina. Planira se da ovo mesto bude arheološka metropola jer se gradi centar za proučavanje neolita Balkana koji će okupiti domaće i svetske studente i stručnjake u arheologiji. Ovo će biti jedinstven centar za proučavanje neolita u Evropi. One of my favorite sites was uh, Thronovac, Neolithic site, which we saw this morning. Um, and it's, it's, it's essentially a, a Neolithic Pompeii. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, it's really wonderful. It's things like the Vinca culture that, of course, you know, we study that in UK universities. It's one of the great European type sites. And here to be able to see the original type site and then to see the excavations today where you, you know, you've got the upper story house floors I don't know, you know, I think basically all the archaeologists of Europe should flock to see. It's one of the great sites I've seen. We had very positive talks. Hopefully some of the scholars in the UK can start helping to some degree. Um, and hopefully some of the students can come and participate because really the opportunity for them to dig on archaeology of that kind of quality, they'd be foolish to miss it. Putem Dunava koji je graničio u svim epohama dva sveta, dospeli smo u Komšiluk, koji je takođe bio naseljen ne samo u Neolitu, nego i u ranijem periodu Mezolita. Lepenski vir je prestonica Balkanske praistorije i lokalitet koji je ime dobio po Dunavskom viru. Tamo se i dalje divimo neverovatnim i nikada nigde u svetu ponovljenim ribolikim božanstvima, koja su do našeg vremena dospela u široko poznatim kamenim predstavama. Od 6500. godine pre nove ere pa nadalje, Lepenski vir je bio pouzdano osvedočen kao mesto življenja, rađanja i umiranja tadašnjih takozvanih primitivnih populacija. Lepenci su stvorili specifičnu kulturu, živjeli su u uređenim naseljima, bavili se sakupljanjem plodova, ribolovom i naravno lovom. Lepenski vir je situated in one of the most beautiful parts uh, of, of Serbia. Well, that's not entirely fair because uh, there's so many great rural and rolling hills, but um, uh, right along the Iron Gates area where there's big steep cliffs on the side of the river. Um, and uh, you, can, you can really imagine um, living and fishing in that location. And I think it would have been a pretty nice life. And that was quite amazing to see the density of houses in a, in a time where so many other parts of the world do not have settlements uh, of that type. The Pinsky Vir was very interesting. Um, 
I loved I loved the building it was in. The way they've laid out the museum there is is very. It's you still feel like you're on the hillside next to the river, even though you're in this beautiful glass structure. Um, and it was lots of light so that you could see all the houses laid out really, really well. The landscape is very, very beautiful. Um, I hadn't quite realised that you could see the snow-capped hills. There was one day we drove driving south, we went down through the mountains. And of course, just to see the Iron Gorge, the Iron Gates of the Danube, you know, when um, Trajan's crossing place, you know, again, one of these great, you know, the Danube is always great when you see it, but to see it in the Iron Gates with tremendous sights like Lepensky Veer, but then that also sends to where the Roman armies crossed, um, you know, another thing that makes it a great crossroads. Archeološko bogatstvo koje nude ovi krajevi duž Đerdapske klisure, večito zagledani u Dunav, pričaju nam i o istoriji, vremenu koje daleko bolje poznajemo i koje nam je pored arheologije ostavilo i mnogo pisanih tragova. Stoga dobrodošli i u rimsku epohu. Zakucat ćemo na vrata grada posvećenog Dijani, odnosno grčkoj boginji Artemidi. Ova boginja je prema mitovima pomalo stroga, ali njeno dostojanstvo se poštuje i danas. A tamo nas očekuju obrisi burne prošlosti vezane za rimska osvajanja Dakije, za velike careve Domicijana i Trajana. I o vremenu kasnije, tokom srednjeg veka, ništa manje uzbudljive istorije svedoči Golubačka tvrđava. Na samom početku gvozdene kapije, kako se inače prevodi persijska reč Đerdap, kao neki čuvar uzdiže se Golubački grad, srednjevekovna tvrđava za koju se ne zna tačno kada je i čijom rukom sagrađena. Ovaj vidikovac koji pogledom može obuhvatiti svetlo sa obe strane reke, stoji danas kao podsjećanje da su stare zidine videle mnoštvo ratnika koji su mačevima, hrabrošću i svojim delima pisali istoriju ovog zdanja. Jedan od njih, despot Stefan Lazarević, srpski vladar, čuven po viteštvu u čitavoj Evropi, dao je trajan pečat istoriji tvrđave. U vreme njegove vladavine Golubačka tvrđava je nadograđena. Tokom kulminacije srednjovekovne srpske države, despot Stefan Lazarević ostavio nam je u nasledđe i zadužbinu, čuvenu Manasiju. The again was beautiful and um, the setting in the hills was, it was just a very lovely spot um, and it was, the, the stone walls next to it were so impressive um, because I wouldn't, a monastery in England you wouldn't expect to see such strong fortifications around the church so that was a very different, a very different perspective on monastic life that I hadn't experienced before and the frescoes in the church were gorgeous to think that they've survived for so long and are still in such good condition. Vraćamo se u doba Rima, jer su tokom poslednjih faza postojanja Rimske imperije naši krajevi odigrali značajnu ulogu, koja je krunisala autentični identitet Rimskog carstva. Ne može biti slučajnost što se baš ovde rodilo i uvek vraćalo 18 čuvenih imperatora, galerije, Maksimin Daja, Konstantin Veliki, Justinijan i ostali. Zato krenimo sada tim carskim tragovima. U Gamzigradu nadomak Zaječara nalazi se carska rezidencija gde se rodio i umro rimski car Galerije Maksimijan. Svoj dvor je po majici Romuli nazvao Romulijana. Ovo mesto ilustruje mit o harizmatičnom vladaru koji izvršava najveće podvige, uništava zlo, uvodi red i usrećuje celo čovečanstvo, a zatim se povlači da ovde u najvećem sjaju provede poslednje godine života. Felix Romulijana je sagrađena da bude večan spomen na božanskog imperatora Gaja Galerija Valerija Maksimijana. Zbog vezanosti za mesto rođenja i posede zemlje, osjećaja pripadnosti i porekla sa sela, 
Carevi i bogati građani u antičkom Rimu gradili su velika gazdinstva i vile širom carstva. Tome je i podlegao jedan od njih blizak prijatelj Konstantina Velikog. On je u carevom rodnom najsu, današnjem Nišu, započeo gradnju velelepnog kompleksa na prostoru Medijane. To je bilo poljoprivredno dobro, ali i letnikovac za odmor, uživanje i lečenje. Bilo je to i privremeno boravište rimskih careva i visokih državnih službenika, posebno Konstantina, koji je često boravio u rodnom gradu. Našim gostima, arheolozima sa Cambridgea, snažan utisak ostavilo je to što nalazišta iz antičkog i rimskog perioda ukazuju na veliku raskrsnicu puteva i dinamičnu istoriju. Put koji je dovodio i odvodio razne narode, koji će kasnije još više obojiti do tada konzervativnu rimsku kulturu, prolazio je pored Dremizijane, blizu današnje Bele Palanke. To je bila raskrsnica gde su se sretala rimska božanstva sa maloazijskim sve do četvrtog veka, kada je u punoj snazi zaživelo hrišćanstvo oličeno u neponovljivoj ličnosti svetog Nikete Mezijanskog, koji je pokrstio ove krajeve. Svedočanstvo o toj šarenolikosti rasa, populacija i naroda i sučeljavanju kultura jeste čuveni rimski logor, a posle toga i grad Viminacijom iz trećeg veka. Danas je tu kostolac, a nekada je bila raskrsnica puteva koji su povezivali severni deo Balkanskog poluostrva sa ostalim delovima Rimske imperije. U Viminacijumu su rame uz rame dugotrajni vojni rok služili legionari gotovo svih istočnih horizonata Rimskog carstva. Gotovo da nije bilo rimskog imperatora koji nije prošao kroz Viminacijom ili u njemu boravio duže ili kraće vreme. Mi smo bili svesni te činjenice da je 18 rimskih imperatora rođene ovde, ali moram da priznam da su nam je narošto pojačali ljudi iz inostranstva. MIT ili jedan od najprestižnijih univerziteta u svetu, tamo negde u Bostonu, preko puta reke se nalazi još čuveni Harvard, je napravio jedan projekat koji se zove Panteon. Iskenirao je sve zemlje sveta od 4000 godina pre naše ere do današnjeg dana, po čemu su poznate. I onda naravno skenirao i Srbiju i na opšte iznenađenje prvih 18 mesta, osim 17. Nećemo to otkriti gledalce, neka oni izađu na taj sajt i pogledaju, je su rimski imperatori. I u stvari dolazimo do stare istine Nije ono što vi mislite da jeste, niste to, nego ono kako vas drugi vide. I have to admit, the Roman period here is something which we never expected. The students are in awe. Viminatum was something absolutely stunning. It was not only stunning because it's a Roman period per se, because we actually have seen three, four different parts of being Roman, from graveyard to uh, amphitheater, then we see the bath, and then we have seen the fort where the soldiers lived. And also we have seen the infrastructure, we have seen the gut of Roman Empire, the sewers, uh, the underfloor heating, and this is nitty gritty of the archaeology, which we have very rarely have, um, you know, possibility to see. And seeing this in one big lump was very important. Po slomu Rimskog carstva 476. godine, nasljednici te velike imperije nastavit će ka istoku još čitav milenijum slavnu priču. Najuticajniji car tog vremena, tog ekspazivnog šestog veka, bit će Justinijan, koji će sada u potpuno hristijanizovanom carstvu Vizantije ipak sačuvati neke navike svojih prethodnika. I on će se vraćati svome domu i detinstvu kada bude podigao čuveni carečin grad Justinijanu Primu. Some of the greatest sights I've ever seen in my life. I've just been totally knocked out by the quality of the archaeology. Um, you have so many impressions, but you know, just on the last two days, seeing somewhere like Justina Prima, incredible. So I work on um, the start of Christianity in Western Europe, so it's very interesting to be able to compare it to what we see in Eastern Europe, because uh, we went to Justiniana Prima, which has a lot of very early basilicas, um, 
and just seeing the way they dominate the city in the way in the way that they don't uh, in Western Europe. Um, it's a good comparison. I, I definitely want to bring some of that into my work and think more about Europe as a whole instead of just the West, because then you get a very limited perspective on Christianity if you just look at the West. Posle ovako ubedljivih argumenta o značaju naših krajeva za izgradnju sadašnje Evrope, da li imamo pravo da kažemo da ne zaslužujemo gotovo počasno mesto u sadašnjoj slici starog kontinenta, tim pre što je Evropa nastajala na mestima koje smo sada obišli. A još i da se setimo da evropski identitet nije građen samo kamenom i duhom, nego i krvlju. U Nišu postoji i podsjetnik na mesta stradanja kao što su Ćele Kula, spomenik iz prvog srpskog ustanka i koncentracioni logor Crveni krst koji su osnovali Nemci tokom drugog svetskog rata. Ova mesta i dalje prizivaju sećanje da je za radost današnjeg dana neko predao ono najvrednije što je imao – život. But one thing which we did not expect coming here, the students' reaction to the um, concentration camp. Because we tried to give our students not only archaeology, but the history of the country. And for showing the history of the country, we went to the concentration camp first. And we have to admit that the last day was slightly subdued day. The students were not involved in the whole day asking questions and participating in the field trip as we would expect it. And then they told us, because of the concentration camp, they have been so shaken what they have seen that actually they could not do what we expected them. And that, in a sense, is very good because those memories cannot be swept under the carpet. And that also is a part of, of being Serbia and seeing the Serbian um, heritage. Jako nas zanima, na primjer, kako je saživot ljudi sa arheologijom ili životno okruženje u kojem arheologija živi. Ta variacije koje su postojale u Srbiji sigurno su privukle pažnju, jer mi smo imali priliku da vidimo od paleolita do modernog vremena. Tako da je bilo dobra prilika pokazati šta Srbija u stvari ima, ono što su vidjeli, a u stvari i da osjetiti potencijal šta Srbija može da ima. U svakom slučaju bilo je od koristi jednim i drugim, jer posle je Svakog naše vizita, posete, mi smo razgovarali sa lokalnim arheolozima i svako je iznosio svoje predloge. U svakom slučaju moglo bi doći na dosta do razmjena ideje i da se vidi gde ide budućnost arheologije. The quality of the archaeology and the monuments, the, the amount of international, potential for international tourism, um, it, I think it will come back and pay dividends because it, it, uh, it has such promise. I think if you can, you know, get the sites displayed, get the international advertising going, um, this could become a major center of tourism. I'm not sure if people do know what they have here in Serbia, I, um, it, archaeologically anyway. Um, as I said earlier, the incredible diversity of site types that you have and the quality of each of those site types uh, is something that you don't get many other parts of the world. You may have wonderful, um, wonderful sites of a specific period in a lot of other places, um, but to get so many amazing sites at, through all periods of prehistory and the historical period is quite absolutely stunning. Um, and I think it's something to be very proud of, to protect and to take pride in, um, and also to go visit these places and, and learn, because uh, it's, it's just absolutely incredible. It's a, it's a wonderful museum that you have here under your feet. Mesta koje smo sada obišli stvaraju čudesnu nit od vinčarskih graditelja, lepenskih sakupljača plodova, preko rimskih careva i legionara, srednjovekovnih srpskih vitezova, do hajduka i žrtava ratova. Na ovom mestu je danas Srbija i savremeni čovek kojem se postavlja pitanje za sutra. Da li dovoljno cenimo i da li smo dostojni naslednici velikana koji su nas tokom vremena darivali onim čemu se ceo svet danas neizmerno divi?